unmute the sound if I want you to hear and see me, huh? Check, check, check us out. Hey, everybody. Please confirm that you can hear and see us. And by us, I mean me and the many personalities inside of my head. All right, now that we've uh, tested this out a little bit. Hey, everybody. Please confirm that you can hear and see us. And by us, I mean me and the many personalities inside of my head. All right, now that we've uh, tested this out a little bit. All right, we're gonna be starting soon.
Hey everyone, and the party is starting. Playing Miso Walker. I've played him before. We uh, we're starting out with E4, E5. This is a blitz tournament, so I can't start late. And I actually managed to uh, to get all the technical stuff set up this time to make sure that we would have a broadcast here. I'm playing a Scotch. He's playing the Bishop to C5 variation. Um, play this a number of different ways. I'm going to play something a little bit more old school, a little more classical right here. You play queen to d2, that's the right inner mizzle by him to hit the f2 pawn. And uh, now I play knight to c3, and the goal is to play queen f4 and simplify into an endgame potentially. That's kind of the idea. With bishop to d7, it's not the most common approach. I would guess, I would say. Um, closing up my my phone here. Bishop to e6 is more common, and it keeps the opportunity to bring the rook to d8 and to use the use the d file. He's still getting that opportunity, and uh, strategically, his position is actually pretty sound. Um, the major issue is that White has the four on three as far as these four pawns versus these three, but. Um, you know, it's blitz, and, and definitely anything can happen. I'd like to play bishop to c4 next. He, he's just not in an ideal development with the way he put his bishop on d7, and you can tell because now he's playing bishop to e6. So I'm going to decline the rook trade and develop my bishop. What I'd like to do is then play g4, maybe g5. I want to use my 4-on-3 majority, which is positionally white's uh, biggest trump in the position, my biggest trump card. Okay, that's a little bit risky to play g5. Now, after bishop e5, he's probably going to have to play bishop to e7. And the main issue is I'm not sure that that really helps his structure anyway. Because playing g5, I can I can now try to open up the h file and see if that can bring any, any magic using that h4 pawn anchor as I did. He's playing quickly, which is smart. He may know that I'm broadcasting and trying to take advantage of my... Uh, my multitasking situation, which I respect. But hey, we're here for entertainment and to educate. To entertain and to educate. That's the idea. So the fact that we get to play in a USCF Blitz tournament on chess.com. This is the first ever USCF Blitz tournament on chess.com. That's just an added bonus, right? That's just the uh, that's just the fun stuff. So here we go. I'm going to try to keep the H file if I can. Um, although he plays bishop to f6, which means he's going to trade and then play um, rook to h8. Not a bad idea. I guess I'm going to activate my king. I'm not sure I really have another better option. I'll pre-move. The time control is 3-2. If you're joining us for the first time and wondering what time control we've uh, we've set up to be the, the blitz time control of choice for all USCF rated blitz tournaments that are going to take place on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, that is um, that is the designated time for at least right now, for the only Blitz tournaments that are USCF rated taking place on chess.com. He's played really well. In fact, he closed it off really well, and this is this is going to be a really tough position to try to win. I'm going to try to uh, relocate this knight, but I'm not sure exactly how to do it. First thing I'm going to do is maybe improve my bishop. Sort of bluffing at this pawn here. That's obviously not the idea. But maybe I'm going to put the bishop on e3 to hit g5 and bring this knight from e2 to g3 to uh, maybe either h5 or f5, depending. I feel like I have more potential if my knight gets over here to the king side. I just have to be a little bit careful if he plays knight e5. My f3 pawn is hanging, so I need to uh, need to guard that. I guess I'm going to guard it this way, even though it's a little awkward, because I want to keep the e2 square open for my knight. Uh, knight to e2 will just give me more improving options if I'd like to uh, head to d4, or maybe head g3 to h5 and hit this bishop, uh, with the idea of just creating a little bit more pressure on the queen on the king side, which is where I still have my 3-on-2 to majority, despite the fact that it's blocked. Um, so he plays knight there, which makes sense. But if I play knight to d4, I think I can win the bishop pair. So either he'll have to take it, or, uh, or I'm going to take e6. <clears throat> still doesn't necessarily guarantee me a huge edge. That may not have been the right bishop to give up, honestly. I know he's worried about the uh, maybe the e6 pawn becoming weak, but I'm not sure that that's the right bishop to give up, given that maybe now now I have a dark square bishop that he doesn't, um, and the f6 pawn and the g5 pawn are on dark squares. I guess I'm going to keep an eye on those pawns for now, and we'll defend this way. 
But still, this is going to be a really tough position. I'm not sure I'm even any better here, to be totally honest. To be totally honest with you, I'm not sure that I have any advantage in this position. Miso Walker playing very well right now. I'm going to play f4 if he gives me the opportunity. And uh, my idea is that in some positions, perhaps now I can take on e5 and have the g-pawn that's passed. I also have g5 as an idea. But he's doing exactly what he should be doing, really. Um, so an interesting point is, is should I... How should I handle this first? I think I feel like I should play this with b4. Even though normally you don't have to react to it, I don't want him to undouble the pawns. And that would give him a 3 on 2. And now I'm also hitting the dark squares, which may give me some other avenues to break through. I like that move. So I thought he might do that, but I'm actually okay with this, because the a pawn trade is, is not that big of a problem for me. Let's go hit that guy. And now I actually have an avenue to get in, as long as there's no tactical consequences. King f5, bishop e6 check takes, he takes with check. Um, it's tricky, right? I also have this check, and when he goes to e6, I can try to relocate the bishop around so that I'm threatening like some sort of discovery. I can also take, and I have the outside g-pawn, so I, I, I feel like I should be better here, but knowing the right avenue to approach this is, is not easy. King f5, bishop e6, king takes, knight takes g4, I back up, he backs up. Um, to e5, I feel, like, I feel like that trade is going to favor me. But I'm getting low on time, and this, is, uh, this game is getting really close right now. Definitely getting close. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy with the bishop here advantage that I have. I'm going to go here. And then I think I'm going to check him backwards. And now I'm going to go up here. Okay, he goes to e5 there. Now I can push. This is a tough position. Tough, tough position. Okay, that was that was a bad move, actually. That that was very helpful. He needed to keep the bishop on that diagonal. I was trying to figure out a way to get in, um, which was maybe going to be to relocate my bishop to f7 or something. But now he's in trouble. And my threat is bishop h5 check followed by e7, which would just be winning on the spot. So I think I'm going to get this one now. I wasn't confident I was going to get this one the whole time, honestly. Mr. Walker played a very, very high-quality game of chess here honestly, to get into this position. Uh, but now it's over. And indeed, he resigns. Understandable. So that was, um, that was fun, right? That was interesting. And uh, <clears throat> I think... I think he, he played really well. I, I don't know where my advantage necessarily slipped. I didn't play the most ambitious of scotch lines. I mean, white's advantage is minimal at best here. But normally, bishop to e6 is the move, so they have the d file. And, and you'd think after bishop to d7, I should have been able to get a, a slightly bigger advantage. Perhaps going for the traditional approach here with queen of four is just, is just, um, is just unnecessary here. Maybe bishop to d3 and castle short, put the king on h1, and then drive the f-pawn. You can also use the four-on-three majority in the middle game where it can be really effective. So that might have been something for a little bit more of an advantage because honestly, after trading queens, I have trouble with the f2 pawn. So the fact that I have to take time to guard it, one move he can even consider in some scenarios is a move like f5. It may not work if I can keep the e pawn, but you know, like for example, if h6 and a castle, and then he tries to like open up some lines, if I play e5, maybe g5, that's an idea that sometimes black can do. So, but, he, but he was definitely worse here. He was just a little bit worse the whole time, and I felt like I was going to push this one to a victory pretty comfortably to start. But I underestimated this idea where he could just liquidate all the rooks, and all of a sudden my advantage is minimal at best with, with, control, with the control over the dark squares that black has here. You know, um, So I, I, I underestimated how tough this position would be to win. And I think if he, if he doesn't give up the dark square bishop and actually... If I take the light square bishop and he establishes it on the dark squares, it may be really hard to maneuver a way in. Really, really. Um, 
I think this idea of coming around to G3 was a good one by me. It's really my only chance to get a win. Perhaps he needs to expand the pawns first and then try C4. That might have been more uh, sound to play like B4 to cripple these pawns and then C4 in some situations to try to trade and, and trade. He has to be careful, of course, because he doesn't want to lose a pawn, but I feel like this position should be holdable for him with best play, honestly. And even with what happened, he uh, he's definitely letting me push, and this is getting tougher, but... Um, you know, if he gives check and I move, like, what? how am I making progress? I guess I have to put the king on g7 to avoid a, a perpetual. But uh, but that's not very clear as far as how I'm going to proceed. So with time pressure added, this was definitely a hard-fought game. And Miso Walker, you should be very, uh, you should be happy with your, with your play here. So, and just like that, round one is in the books. For the uh, USCF Blitz Tournament. Um, if you're just joining us, that is what this is. This is Blitz Chess taking place on chess.com that also happens to be USCF rated. The special online ratings that the USCF created just to engage more people, I guess, in their uh, online, in the online communities. And <clears throat> they've been really successful so far at chess.com. Honestly, I wasn't sure how many people would be interested, but this is only the second tournament. And we have... Uh, uh, we have a, a lot of players. It looks like almost 40 again. Um, tricky to tell from the standings, actually, just how many players we have. But uh, I am not the highest rated, not the top seed. I'll go ahead and add a uh, screenshot here of the of the standings so that you can see it. Um, right here. And so that when we are discussing it, you can see exactly what's going on here. And uh, so the Lancer is the highest rated player, <coughs> excuse me, right there at the top, followed by Mr. Daniel Wrench. Hey, I know that guy. Red Chessman, Petrosionic, lots, lots of pretty decent players. And, and round two is starting, so we don't have a lot of time to discuss. We're going to move right on to playing no chat, no game. That sounds like some kind of like trash talk from White Man Camp Jump. Yo, no trash, no game, yo, right? Something about my voice is what, like Terminator? I, I don't know that that's true. That sounds a little weird. Maybe you need to think about your Terminator references. There's one thing I've learned. It's never make a James Cameron movie reference unless you're prepared for the consequences. That's right. So my opponent is playing a maybe a Stonewall if he plays F4. Yep, indeed. It looks like that's exactly what he wants. And I'm going to play the best approach I can to go ahead and, and be aggressive and challenge the Dark Squares which is the most strategically disciplined way to, to challenge this approach. And you strike immediately with e5, and, and this, is, this is what you want. Now, I was going to say, we can, we can open this thing up as we should. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to jump right in to g4, maybe. Maybe try to go after the dark square. So he sees that. He says, I don't want a piece of that. I don't want none of that. West running that. Um, I get it, but I can take e3, takes f6, takes d2, takes g7, takes c1, just a ton of fun, right? If I take here, and he takes, and I take, he takes, at the end of that whole line, I'm, I'm still winning a pawn. Um, also, knight to g4 is a strong move here to consider, which creates the threat of knight e3 and just opens up more pieces to the dark squares. Um, I'm not sure what the best move is here. They all look good. They all look pretty good, so so I guess, I guess I'm just going to... No, I'm, no, I'm going to go for knight g4. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Um, I thought maybe taking e5 was the simplest, but then at the last second, I thought maybe he'll play e4. And though that position is really nice for me, and I've got a huge grip on the dark squares, I, I think maybe the potential uh, for tactics in this position is, is even better. If I take on e5 with the knight and remove his knight, there's ideas of the queen coming to h4 and, and possibly developing a uh, an attack. Let's keep the afternoon caffeine hitting the system, especially while you're doing stuff like this. Okay. So I guess I'm going to take now. Could have taken with the knight there as well, but there's no e4 anymore after pawn take, so there's no way for him to close it up. And um, I'm not really sure my idea of getting some kind of mating net was really very... Uh, more than more than just a little bit superficial. 
So now we can go this way, and we're, we're currently up a pawn. Even if he wins back that pawn, we're up a pawn, which is nice. Because that means in the time he's going to take to try to go grab that guy, as he should, because it's kind of a thorn, in the time he's going to take to do that, potentially we will have some other pressure asserted onto the position. It's one thing to think about in your games, especially as far as the initiative goes, that temporary advantages um, can be used as leverage to create more concrete advantages in other areas of the board. So when you have a lead in development, you look for a way to convert that into some sort of concrete positional weakness, like double pawns or um, something else that you would consider a weakness that you could target long term in the game. And that's the mark of a good player as far as technique goes, is allowing the advantage to evolve and not being stuck on one way of thinking that, that the position is going to be winning. So <clears throat> there's a number of good moves I can play here, actually. Um, and uh, it seems like the stream is going pretty well. Let me know as long as you feel like that's the case. A number of good moves I can play here, but I want to be careful. He's going to try to go get back that pawn, which I get it. You know, I get it. I'm going to play a sort of surprising move, risking it, opening up my king. But if I establish the pawn in f4, how irritating is that going to be, right? And the most risky part of this move f5 is potentially the light squares. But I don't really see a clear way for him to for him to go after those light squares right now. Um, let me know, everybody, that you can hear and see me and that things seem to be going okay. Oh, he takes it, but isn't that... Isn't that bad news, Bears? Can I play f4? Aha! f4, he's going to play queen check. Well, I underestimated that, didn't I? Ugh. But he underestimated something else. Which is that I can actually trade everything and then play f4. Forking the rook at knight. So this is something he didn't see. Or he saw it now, but it, it's, it's a little bit too late. Too late. Too late, too gone, too wrong. Too many reasons why I can't stay. It sounds like the great start to a country song. It's too late, and I'm too gone, and there's too many reasons why this house is wrong. No, 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 no. I don't know. That sounds a little Brooks and Dunny. She did my part to break her heart. She walked out on me and tore my world apart. She used to be mine. Look at that. That's a classic country coming out of you right now, Danny. Pull it together. Oh, I'll pull it together. I'll pull it together, all right. Don't you worry about it. I'm going to give a little check. Attack a nice little queen. Um... I guess we'll just put the rook on b8, though. Simplest way to convert upon the advantage. And now I'm back to speaking like a robot. This is your... This is your chance, really. This is your real, real chance. So, um, that's it. I, I took I took down this one. There's still a lot of games going. It was a little bit more quickly quick of a victory. You know, the Stonewall against uh, proper development is is uh, can be a little bit of a dubious opening. And it's exactly because of the kind of approach you saw here, which I think I played last time in the USCF tournament too. Um, and, uh, and then here comes E5. Um, it's just irritating for white because taking everything at the end, there's this bishop hanging on D3. And even if it's not, if you take, take, shake, and bake, at the end I have knight G4 with a big fork town. And again, the bishop is hanging. So this is just this is just uh, positionally, black is already very very happy here. Maybe just clearly better. Um, and so, in order for white to play these systems, they have to be a little more uh, secretive. They have to be a little more promiscuous. They have to be a little more uh, devious about their plans. And often that means, um, you know, the Tory systems you can play this way and, and, and get the knight out and the bishop out and e3 and c3 and then at some point the knight goes to e5 and you play f4. I don't know. Of course, white has some other move orders. I'm not going to get into all the theory of the stonewall here now, but this just straightforward approach is, is really not making any effort to, uh, to stop me from this plan, and I think black was probably already 
probably already doing really, really well here. Very, very happy. And, and again, the reason why he couldn't just take everything here is because in the end I would have had F4 with a little bit of Red Rover. Send uh, no chat, no game right over. All right, well, we're going to wait a little bit. Um, and uh, the next round is going to start in just a few moments. So for all of you who are with us, we're going to take a quick break. And we're going to put on the uh, We Will Be Right Back uh, music. Um, and uh, and we're going to join you all soon. Actually, actually do we want to do that? Um, not as fully prepared for, uh, for that as I wanted to be. But, but uh, I guess we could just keep analyzing and just do this, do this show straight, right? Seven rounds, so if you're just joining us, I mean, I don't know if you're allowed to late join yet. We're building in the tech where you can late join a lot of these tournaments. Um, this is USCF rated, in the online uh, ratings for, for USCF. And it is our first ever Blitz tournament. Uh, first ever USCF rated Blitz tournament. Let's take let's uh, take a look at what's going on in the Lancers game. The Lancer just won by checkmate, so that's what that's what's going on in the Lancers game. And uh, he started out, we have these uh, nice, exciting dragons. And knight to b4, not the most common approach compared to knight to b6. But certainly possible. Um, yeah, now now white is, white is getting in these relations where black seems like he had some crazy pressure going on here. But a rook is a rook. No matter no matter what you think about it, yeah. Now now somehow at the end of that whole little fiasco, um, White ends up up a significant amount of material. That was crazy. I don't even know what's going on in this game. Honestly, I I, I wonder if it's theory. Right here, it seems nice and fun, and and like Black is breaking through everything, but White's pressure seemed to be just as much in the game. So. Uh, really interesting stuff. I wonder if White's best approach is not this super aggressive move bishop g5, but actually to try to run the king. But the Lancer proves otherwise. Um, he just keeps playing aggressive moves. Knight to d4 seems a little questionable, as does e5. Although, I, I'll be honest, I don't have a clear, clear suggested improvement for Black. I mean, I'd like to get the bishop out and get some sort of discovery on the queen, but... That seems like it's just as messy, and I personally don't have the brain capacity to sit here and try to figure out this position, because I don't have to. It's not my game, just being honest. And what matters is that round three is starting right now. This is Blitz. This is fast and furious stuff, and we are not kidding around. Well, I'm going to switch to D4 now instead of E4, and uh, we will see what other Gabe, like the other, other white meat, We'll see what other Gabe comes up with here. I wonder if his brother's name is Gabe. And so they named him Other Gabe just so his parents wouldn't confuse him. Like Gabe and Other Gabe, right? That would that would make sense to me. Um, so C6, and we have a nice little Verisoft opening developing. I should describe it like it's a cooking channel. We have a, a nice little Verisoft, a uh, nice little crispy crust developing here. Uh, we have a nice little Verisoft. Developing with a nice little pawn chain that focuses toward the queen side. And when the bishop goes to g3, if they take, we're going to have a nice little pawn structure here with an open h file and the potential for a long term king side attack. Now, one of the mistakes you could make is oversalting this position. I guess this metaphor doesn't really work, does it? No. No. Focus on the chest, Danny. All right, I will. Stop talking to yourself. Okay, done. Um, okay, well, he takes it. I'm happy actually to take this way. And. He plays queen to b6. Uh, do we really worry so much about that? I don't know. I guess we'll stop the uh, the queen from taking b2 the old-fashioned way with a3. And yes, that is the old-fashioned way, in case you're wondering. At least as far as I'm concerned, that's the old-fashioned way. And, uh, and that's it. So let's uh, let's keep things going here. The idea, of course, everyone, is that he can't take on b2 because knight a4 is a, uh, that's a trapped first lady. All right. That's a, uh, it's not the best situation for her. So he's got to find another way to approach the position. 
likely just developing, I was going to say, and I will also continue to develop naturally, neglecting the pawn because I don't need to defend it directly, and, and he recognizes that and decides to back that thing up, which is also okay with me. I'm not sure that's ideal. Uh, having the queen on b6 kind of prevented me from playing moves like queen e2 that I'm doing now. Um, so the fact that he allowed that allowed me to change that position, I guess, is a little bit of a concession by him. Maybe not the end of the world. I will open up the position and, and transpose into some sort of Karoslav type structure. I'll have a pleasant choice if I should castle short or long. I mean, he's probably going to prepare to castle long now because he's not going to be thrilled with the idea of putting his king over on g8 with my open h file. Um, so that that's definitely something to think about. I wonder if I should take with the queen here. I, I originally, of course, I was just planning to take him with the bishop. But if I take with the queen and he plays knight f6, I have I have some other options um, besides just retreating the queen to e2. Whereas with the bishop taking of knight f6, I would probably just play bishop back to d3. But in this case, I wonder if I have queen e5. I also wonder if I have queen h4 or queen to h4. Uh, sorry, queen to f4. Um, if queen e3, bishop e7, queen g5, cackles long, queen takes g7, that's a pawn. And a little bit irritating for him, right? So I'm going to... I'm gonna, see if this threat of queen to g5 can amount to anything. Um, he decides he's not too worried about it, and that's okay with me. I will continue straight forward to attack that pawn. We'll see how he chooses to defend it. If he's going to castle long, I think I can take that pawn. Mm -hmm. And one of the nicest things about that, actually, is that... Uh, there's no clear way for him to take advantage of my king being in the center either. So that's fun. That is fun town. Population white. Hoping to be in a position to maybe actually compete for first at this one. The first uh, USCF Rapid Tournament. If you missed it, you can go ahead and check it out on YouTube. Maybe, uh, maybe one of the moderators, TV moderators, can share a link to the YouTube video we shared on Friday. Um... But in the Rapid Tournament, I drew my first game with a dubious peace sack. Although Alex Lenderman then told me later what I what I was confusing about the line, which was awesome. One, it was awesome that Alex watches my videos. And two, he took the time to say, hey, Danny, this is what you messed up. I think I tweeted it. You can look at it. It was pretty funny. Classic Alex. Classic Alex. I will uh, I'll back up here. I'll let him play knight d5 with the tempo, which I know he's going to do. But in reality, that's actually not a great move. You know why? Now the h7 is hanging. So that move feels real good to uh, to bring that knight to d5, but he has to play f5, which is a concession because the e6 pawn is very weak. And now I'm going to play rook to e1 and start to gang up on that guy. I'm just being a big bully right now. I feel like I'm just pointing out all the bad things he's doing. Well, I'm just trying to, you know, just trying to play some chess. Let's kick that knight out of here. And one idea after kicking the knight out is actually taking f5. Because the pawn is pinned to the queen. Um, and I'd be winning the exchange. So just uh, struggling for him. He brings the queen over to g7, which makes sense. I will back the bishop up to d3. Also just being kind of safe here. No reason to take e6 when the uh, bishop might become pinned there in an in irritating fashion. So... Not worthy of my of my uh, of risking it. That's not a biscuit I'm going to go after. This is traditional chess: how you win winning positions, giving your opponent minimal chances, and taking care of business. Okay, he's going to give check and and maybe try to come around and attack either the g2 or the f2 pawn. Makes sense, but not going to be good enough. Um, yeah, that also makes sense. I'll play c5 to kind of solidify that that pawn is going to be stuck on a light square as a weakness for my bishop. That's my idea here as far as c5, keeping the king out of it as well. Now I have rook to d6, which makes guarding c6 a little irritating. I'm going to bring my king up. Uh, yeah, I can play this way. We'll, we'll block it. We're going to play f4 next. 
Uh, I guess we're not actually. Because he's, uh... I can play king f4, but why? Let's, um, let's swing this rook around to the 7th rank. Potentially able to create a little more damage that way. Bring the rook around to the 7th rank. Uh, don't mind if I do. Maybe not the best move, but decided that it's probably good enough. He'll go over there and be kind of distracted with the pawns while I advance over here on this side of the board. Should be enough. King e5, gripping the dark squares. Putting him in a tough position. Does he let my king in? He decides yes, but it's not a happy decision for him. To say the least, we're going to flip the script and go checkmate him on this side of the board. Now we will play g7. And uh, black is just running out of options. Okay, there's many ways to win here. I guess I'll go pick up the rook. Seems to be the most straightforward. And uh, should be good enough. Indeed, he agrees. And uh, just like that, the game is over. So let's go ahead and bring back up the standings here and see where we stand. Me and Petrosionic, Matt, uh, Matt, um, Matt something, I think, or Brian. Brian, I know your name, dude. I know we're buds. Don't worry about it. I just, I forgot. Um, but he also has three out of three, as you can see. And we have uh, some others right there. The Lancers game is not done yet. So we anticipate he will be winning and joining us with three out of three. We have a few more rounds to go. Seven, to be exact, is the total amount of rounds. And so we will uh, let's let's back this thing up and take a quick look at what happened while we have some time. Um, I played a Verisoff. My opponent maybe didn't quite know the theory. Probably Bishop takes to g3 is just premature. It's just unnecessary when you're not getting... I mean, this is not a positional advantage, really. I mean, it's um, the double pawns, of course, are always potentially not ideal, but if they're not isolated and they actually improve some other things in a position, it's, it's really not the best decision for you to make. Um, and so... And now after queen to b6, once he realizes that was a little bit of a waste of time, a3, of course, as we said, if he takes, I play knight a4, and all the squares are trapped. The queen is trapped. So, and, and queen b6, queen c7 and allowed me to kind of play queen d2. If he hadn't, I, I would have had to figure this out. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I was going to castle short, so I don't have to worry about it. But if I play queen d2 or queen e2, he, he might be able to take the pawn. So, um... This made my life a little easier, and I liked that I, I recognized that I could take with the queen, seeing that this was going to be a little irritating for him. Um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to defend this position now. White's a little bit positionally better anyway. I have better space. This pawn is, is further advanced, so you have this structure, which is a Karoslav. White has a little bit uh, more control over the critical squares, but, but black always has the options to, to change it with c5 or e5 if, if the moment allows but now it just it just became more of a problem and, and after losing that pawn now he's i've turned the temporary advantage of my small lead in development and him um kind of struggling with a little bit of lack of space into something concrete which was a pawn in this case and uh i induced knight to d5 and f5 that was just me being mean because i, I this is but maybe he's just worse anyway i mean but 95 is just not as good as it looks. It gains a tempo, but after that, now what, right? And then you have a lot of positional weaknesses. So, so that helped, and uh, here it was just a a simplification of the position into a winning endgame. Up up some pawns, and and the rest, as they say in Mother Russia, was a matter of technique. And that's it. So, uh, okay, so we have the next round about to start any moment. There was only one game left, and it happens to be between the Lancer and uh, and what is going on here in shoot film. Hmm. Theoretically, is this position a draw? I don't know. Uh, the Lancer is black, so he should be winning. I think this should be winning. Um. No, Queen of Seven in the chat is not a blunder of a rook, because the pawn's going this way, everybody. Uh, but I think black is winning. Okay, well, now now it's winning. 
I was going to say, I think Black is winning by, uh, or was going to be winning. Now it's just the, uh, wow, very good technique by Lance. This is the Philidor position, which is a well-known, easily winning endgame. Here, here it's just, okay, that's one way to do it. But when you check, you'll have this check and you win the Rook. It's theoretically very, uh, e okay, he missed it. He's under time pressure, but but the, the this is not the right approach for him. White should play King F8 even. This was not the right approach for uh, for the Lancer. The idea is you, you bring the Queen to the long diagonals where, the, where they read. Oh, it's uh, is it going to be a draw now? Queen F8 was not a good move. He should be checking here. Uh, I think eventually White is going to blunder the Rook because of the way he's playing it, but that was really not the right technique, and now it looks like he's done just that. He's, he's blundered the Rook. Oh, wait, no. He actually managed to get into the third rank defense with King F8. This is this is the hardest. If he plays King E7, yeah, this is the hardest position to win. Um, with the you can you can give check. Uh, this is okay too, as long as you keep the rook on the opposite side of the queen. It's actually fine. Um, this is the most difficult defense to break down. So not not good technique at all by the Lancer. Of course, I already highlighted he missed the forced win in the Philidor by that. And you would guess he's probably going to win. Oh, mate. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're going to guess he's going to win because of time pressure being involved. It's so much harder to be white. But I think that depending on how many moves they had played in this endgame, um, there was a good chance that white could have drawn there after the Lancer messed up and allowed him to get the third rank defense. But hey, life goes on, and we are back to our own games. We have our own things to worry about here. And uh, I'm going to play e4 and go right into an open Sicilian. And see what it's all about, Alfie. Okay, we'll play a Yugoslav attack if he wants it. This is uh, this is not for the faint of heart. This is, you know, I don't want just a piece, Bob Barker. I want the whole thing. This is exactly what we want. Uh, Rook to c8 that early is not the best. I'll play g4. Queen to c7 is the correct move there. See now he plays queen c7 and never really had a chance to play for knight a5, which is which is kind of ideal for white to get the attack going. He, you want the queen on a5 if you're black because it opens up these exchange sacks on c3 and and then and then there's threats of a2 with the bishop and queen lining up. It's kind of the whole key to this line. So this is really um, really not ideal for him. He can take on f1. I'm not even sure how I'll take it. I'll probably take with the d rook because why not, right? Yeah, I should just do that. Um, I actually think maybe I was I missed a really good move here. No, it only works if he moves the bishop off. If he moves the bishop off in some positions, I can also take f6 and then play knight d5, which is a fork of the queen and bishop, and then take f6 with check, and then everything's doubled and destroyed over here, and it's it's really not going to be the best situation for him. So those of you complaining there's a little bit of a lag, I mean, I'm kind of happy there's a little bit of a lag because if my opponents were watching this in real time... Um, there might be a better chance that they could actually follow what's going on. Uh, okay, but now, now there's a number of good things for me to do, actually. First, I'm going to play h6. Opening up a, uh, a tricky little, a tricky little sneaky little idea. Of course, when the bishop goes to h8, I'm taking here and then playing knight to d5 with a threat of mate <clears throat> on e7. Very anti-Yugoslav attack, very anti-normal Yugoslav attack for me to play h6 and close this off, but I'm doing it with the straightforward perspective that I'm just going to be winning here. Um, because after he takes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take here and, and just win this pawn. And... Um, He's down a pawn. He still has issues with the king side. He probably has to trade. So we'll take there, considering that if he doesn't trade, the f6 pawn is going to be hanging, right? Is everyone having a good time? I say make some. You say noise. Make some. Make some. I say make some. You say noise. Make some. <sighs> make some. <sighs> he said, I play the greatest. I don't know that your position is that great, dude. So if you're talking trash, it may not be the right time for that. Um, maybe he's saying that I'm the higher-rated player, which isn't even true. I'm not the highest-rated player in the tournament, but okay. 
Now I'm happy to take here and then go grab that open file. When you have control over the only open file on the board, um, you're quite happy, right? It's like only one time to take the file. You take it, you like it, you do it, nice. Right? Did that make any sense? Okay, we'll take there. We'll just take this pawn. Um, I mean, at this point, we probably just need to free our back rank, which would make the most sense, and he's going to do the same. I guess I'm just going to come up here. Which pawn do I want? I don't even know. I don't even know what I want. I don't even know what I want, so maybe I should think about it. There's so many options, not quite enough time. I guess... I guess I want the A pawn? What's going on here? If I give check and then he moves, I can give check, I can go in there. And that makes sense, actually. Yeah, that actually looks like the best move. I knew I shouldn't pull the trigger. I knew something wasn't right about the position. Now I come down there. And he's not stalemated, so if he's going to give check on E1 and then sack his rook, he still has pawns to move. Very important. Never underestimate your opponent's um, steel matrix. Yeah. All right, we'll play there. Play there. Mm hmm. I guess we'll take there. Yeah, that's only a little bit irritating. All right, we'll go after the F-pawn. We will go after the F-pawn and then play A4. He's defending really well here, actually. Definitely defending pretty well. Yeah. Hmm. I really would hate to blow this position. Can I, can I do that? If I get in there, and eventually I can block. So if I, if I go for giving up the A and F pawn for his B pawn, I can eventually get my king into a winning position because his king is not ideally placed. So I'm going to give up both the A and the B pawn, and if I've calculated this right, this is a winning position for me. And I will tell you why. Oh, that's irritating. Hmm. I anticipated I could get my king to e7, which would threaten mate on f8. Or um, I could block e uh, block the check on the e5 with rook e6 and then march the f-pawn. But he's found a way to make this really, really difficult. So first thing we're going to do is go here. Now if I come up and go here. really strange. I don't think I'm winning this again. Honestly. Oh, that was a bad move. I don't think I don't think I'm winning. Oh, maybe it wasn't a bad move. I should have played there first so I could give check and go after the H-pawn. Oh, 
Oh man. I guess I blew it. He's losing on time though, maybe. Well, he figured it out. He figured it out with no time left on his clock. Definitely disappointing. All right, well, I dropped a draw. Wow, really well played by my opponent. I don't know how I did that. That was really, really terrible. Really, really terrible chess for me to not win this endgame. Wow, pathetic. Just, I mean, it should be winning on so many levels. <laughs> wow, well, um, congratulations to my opponent. That was horrible. I don't know how I blew that. Um... Wow, I should just play Rook here, maybe. Takes. Even if we just, like, get a tra trade of all these pawns and I just have the A pawn left, it's easily winning. I, I just, I'm flabbergasted with myself right now. It was a good start. A great Sicilian Dragon. A winning, winning position out of the middle game. This was really not the right approach by my opponent. Um, you know, I go into this end game where the game is over. I, I'm still just blown away that I that I drew this game. But okay, I mean, he gets some credit. And here, here I should have played f6. Yeah. Because he can't ever move the rook off the back rank without getting mated. Even if he plays there, I can free the back rank. It would seem that f6 would have made more sense. But I didn't. And still, I, I uh, should be winning here. Um, but another bad decision with rook f7. I should have played king b2, takes, and then a4 with the idea that I can get king to b3 and he's trapped. So tough. Tough, tough, tough. Right now I'm I'm now I'm playing from behind after dropping that draw. I'm sure that the standings have at least one person who's 4-0. So now we've got ugh, Mr. Mr. Petro Sionic, uh good player. Master player, national master as you can see from his title. So I am fully aware of his uh, skill here. Gonna want to play some good chess. All right, and uh, we have the typical uh, Berlin, except that I just blundered away the game. Did I really? Hmm. I guess I did. Played a big blunder, but uh, hopefully this one is still fun. I'm going to develop my bishop and try to get castled long. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to develop my bishop, and I'm going to try to get castled long if I can. He wants to play bishop out to g5, of course. Which makes nothing but sense. So how do I deal with that? Not even sure how I want to deal with that. And I'm losing a lot of time here. Makes me regret my decision, actually, to just... Makes me regret my decision to... Uh, to play it the way I did. Still playing some crazy moves here, I am. Sam, I am. Oh. Worst thing to do after a blown cycle, I mean, blown win like last round is to get frustrated with yourself and then really start off the next round badly, but that's exactly what I've done here. You know, I uh, was very frustrated with myself after that game and did not even think about the moves I was playing in the opening, to be honest with you. I did not even really think about it. 
And now I'm going to suffer the consequences of that. It would seem that I am going to suffer the big time consequences of that. I have to find a way to buckle down and be resourceful here. If I can just get castled long, I'll have a chance. If I can just get castled long, I will have a chance to come back in this one. But that's not going to be easy. It is three minute, so neither one of us is really going to have a ton of time to figure this thing out. The thing is, if I get cast with long, not only am I down a pawn here, but the, I mean, I could be down more than that. But when I say I have a practical chance, it's the thing is that I'm down a pawn here, but there are open lines toward the king side. So that's just my hope. That's all. Knowing that it's kind of a faint hope. A faint whisper of a hope. Yeah. A faint whisper of a hope. Sounds like something out of, you know, some sort of French novel. You know, like a Madame Bovary. You know. Hashtag unnecessary adjectives. That's what those books are all about. Indeed. Unless I come up with the king. No, I can't really come up with the king. That would be a bad idea. Gotta go this way. Gotta go this way. Now if I play queen to d5, if he takes, at least there I'm down a pawn and, uh, you know, huh, not what I wanted, not what I wanted. I wish there was a way to uh I wish there was a way to silent my phone, first of all. Hmm. Can I really afford to try to uh avoid trading queens here? Or should I just trade and then see if I can draw? Um I don't know, I think I have to trade and see if I can draw, which is really the most painful decision I've made all day. The most painful decision I've made all day, because I have very bad drawing chances here. Very, very bad drawing chances here. I'm definitely much, much worse. So, was not happy about doing that. I didn't really have a choice. I think I was just, you know, making those tough decisions sometimes, what you got to do. We'll see if I can bring up the king. Hmm. Oh, didn't really think about that. But it may not have been the worst thing for me that he did that, actually. Undoubled the pawns, anyway. So that's a plus. Or is it? I feel like I don't even know what to do anymore. And I'm down on time, big time. So yeah, now what? Back up. Uh, come over. Well, that wasn't good. I 
I don't have any real chances here to do anything but sit and wait and do nothing. <laughs> but sit and wait and do nothing. Those are my chances here. Mm, but he allowed me some chances. So now we're going to go for it. Ah, he blocks it. Yes, indeed, he does block it. The right idea for him. So what is he trying to do, just take a draw? That would be weird. He has to still be winning here. With best play, doesn't he? Uh, go here? I don't know. Come down. I don't even know why he did that. There had to have been something better for him than that. I don't know. I'm just hanging on by a thread here. The fact that I haven't just been lost yet is just a lucky, lucky coincidence here. Uh, we'll guard that pawn, what the heck. Ah. I claimed to draw. I claimed to draw by threefold repetition. I thought it was threefold repetition. I think the position repeated three times. Yeah, position repeated three times. Here's once, twice, three times. Well, I am super psyched about that. That was a mistake by him to allow that. Wow. I mean, I, I was just, you know, I was losing this game from the opening. I, I was just, um, you know, I, I was really frustrated with my play in the last game to give up that draw. And no excuses because we have to pull it together. But um, but this is, you know, I was just losing and bishop f5 was even worse. I guess I, sh I should try to get away with bishop e6 and get castled. But... Uh, but yeah, no, I, uh, you know, was just losing here all game. So did my best, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to just be happy with that. But yeah, if you're if you're watching, it was threefold here. If you go to the end, it was uh, started here. After c5, this position is once, twice, three times. So it doesn't matter the move order. What matters is the uh, consecutive times the position is reached. So just a mistake by Petro and a heads up play by me to press the draw button because I wasn't sure and I wouldn't want to offer a draw to annoy my opponent, but that's the only way really to claim a draw in online chess. You just have to press draw and I got lucky. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break real quick and give you back to some music as this next round gets started and I will be right back and so will the next round. I'm going to zen myself because I really want to win this tournament. That's why I'm taking a quick break.
Hey everyone, quick break, but next round hasn't started. I expected to walk in and see the game start, so let's go ahead and bring up the standings. All right, well I'm only in, uh, I'm only tied for second with four out of five. Looks like there are no perfect five and O's left, so that's um, that's nice, right? That's a confidence builder. Allows you to swallow and let go of the tough game that you uh, drop the draw in a winning position, and then you know the uh, sort of emotional roller coaster that was the last game being completely lost out of the opening. Um, so, but okay, we'll take it. We'll take the uh, the holding of the draw from a really bad start, and we're gonna try to focus on winning our next game. That's all we can do. And you can see what happens. I mean, you know, everybody's been there if you've played in tournament chess where you just, you're so frustrated and then the next round starts right away. And so you don't really have enough time to emotionally let it go, right? But you have to. And so now I'm playing uh, the top seeded person in the tournament. So this is a big game. If I can play well here, everyone, there is a chance to be amongst the uh, the leaders here. So... Playing the higher rated Lancer here. We're going to play a Night Orf and see what he's all about. We'll play a Shevaningen structure. Uh, with castles early, what do I normally like to do? I normally like to play this B6 line, so that's what I'm going to do. A little bit flexible, a little bit strange, but yeah, a little flexible. That's the idea. And now you just have to be careful of, uh, of things. Not to play Bishop E7 you got to play knight d7 first because if bishop e7 e5 takes takes t i guess i guess it works they get yeah bishop e7 would have been fine but i played knight to d7 first and now queen to c7 i'm trying to defend my bishop to eliminate some of the potential of the e5 tactics um and then i'll play bishop e7 and, and get castled next with knight to b3 i will play rook to c8 put the rook on that file uh a4 not Something I'm worried about. I'll play bishop b7 and get castled here. Queen to b8, queen a8. Maybe I sack the exchange. Maybe I don't. I have d5 coming in some positions. Partly the idea. So we're just going to get castled here. And depending on where he moves the queen, we'll maybe just put the king on h8 immediately. You just take away some of the potential tactics. Prophylaxis. Prophylactic thinking. Uh, but if it's my move here, what am I playing? d5? Takes, takes, take everything. I don't know. D5, maybe. Um, maybe not. If it's my here, my move here, I'm probably playing rook e8, actually, the more I think about it, so that I can prepare d5. And one of the ideas about d5 is that if he plays e5, I might pop the knight into e4, um, trade out everything, and um, and be pretty happy. So that's that's part of what I'm thinking here. Wow, well, he just goes right ahead with g4, huh? But now I'm really going to be thinking about playing d5. Um, I'm just going to do it, because tactically it opens up the position and opens up the chance at that bishop there. I'm aware that there's this risk of uh, the pawn being pinned to the bishop on e7. But my thinking was that um, I wouldn't care that much. And uh, I would want to open up his king, although maybe now I'm going to regret that. Who knows? Right? Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe I will regret that. Bishop to b4 is also a move here, though. And you just start to open up this whole position to go after the, uh, the white king. Tactically, that's the idea. If he takes on e6, there's a few options, but among them is actually just to take back. Let him take with check and move the king, and he's got these two pawns, but the position is just a total mess. You know what I mean? I say, you know what I mean, as if we're having a conversation. Even though we clearly are not actually having a conversation. And so the only question is if I instead would like to take on c3 first. If he takes, I take, he takes... No, he can take up seven with intermizzo anyway. So not ideal for me. Not ideal for me. Better just to take back. From a uh, like against Houdini or or Stockfish, is this completely sound for Black? Probably not. Um, 
but there's a lot of practical chances when your opponent has played g4. And so you're recognizing the opportunity to open up the position and, and to take advantage of those chances. And certainly from a perspective that he's now down on time, I'm, I'm kind of happy with my decision. Should I take c3? Or just take d5 now? I think I'm just going to take on d5, actually. With the pawn. Because the other reason I played bishop before, of course, is that I unpinned the queen from the bishop. So, feeling okay about this position right now. Definitely tough playing the top seed here. The only four and a half left in the tournament. Let's see how he wants to handle this. This isn't this isn't a great position for him now, actually. The more I look at it, and I think he's getting down on time, sort of feeling the same way. I'll play knight e4. Um, okay, but now I can take on c3 and take with the queen. Um, and then I'm going to have this chance at, at taking on, on c2, I think. Which is a pawn that's hanging. Okay, so he plays bishop there. That makes sense. I'll move my rook. Definitely makes sense for him. I'm going to play knight to c5 if I can. Ooh, wait. He's just going to give me the c2 pawn? I will take it. I will happily take that pawn. That's another pawn I can go get over here on a4. It's a lot of pawns. But at this point, I'm not even sure I need that many pawns. And I don't want him to keep his pieces on the board. Right? So it might be, it might be wiser to just... Might be wiser to just trade queens, although, I mean, take a4, he plays bishop b2, does he have anything, really, solidly? Doesn't really seem like it, right? I guess I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for that pawn. I'll play here. Hit the queen. Sorry, hit the rook. Wow. He plays knight f5. That is exciting stuff. If I take on d1... He's going to take on g7 because he's just kind of losing here. And I don't want to get mated, but hey, it's a lot of pieces. Right? I'm going to go for it. Call his bluff right now. He takes it, but now I have this. Which either forces a queen trade... Or, I can actually just take it, because when he takes, I trade queens. Oh, I didn't see that at all. Ooh. Now he's keeping things going. Hmm. Wow, I shouldn't have done that. I'm nervous. Nervous now. So I gotta go for this. Is he even gonna? Be able to win? I don't know if he can win when he wins my queen. Um, I thought I was just gonna. Oh crap! What's going on? Ugh! I don't even know what to do here. Time is, time is just ticking away for both of us right now. Got him. He missed that. I had this waiting discover check the whole time. And that was my idea. I wanted, I wanted, honestly, it was a miscalculation. When I first went for this whole thing with Knight here, I mean, I calculated that he would take and I would take and then I would have this, like, huge check coming. But, um... But I just missed that move. And I thought, 
Okay, like, I mean, in, in, with, without being blitz, I mean, even like bishop c6 here, so the rook is guarded, he takes, I take, he's not mating me right away, and there's threats of check as well as this check, like, this position is completely unclear, completely, even with losing the queen, but before that, okay, like, I have to be winning here, I wonder what the most simple way was that I messed up, he gave this check, I mean, maybe the most simple is to just move the king, honestly, <laughs> and just avoid it. And then if he plays here, just go back here. So taking here was really risking it. Um, and and uh, after f5, it really gets worse. But but maybe this move was the move. Yeah, even here, I, I was still winning if I found queen to c2. Again, if he takes with check, I take. If he trades, the queens are gone. And if he blocks, I have rookie one. So this move would have pretty much done it. If he tries to keep the queen on the file, I can win this bishop. And I'm guarding mate. Okay, so queen to c2 would have done it instead of queen g6, which is good to note, as well as probably king f8. Those were both better ways to eliminate my opponent's counterplay. But, uh, but okay, like, this position is probably still winning. I just, I just didn't have the time to figure it out. I was freaking out. Even just, even like this is probably winning. I mean, he gives check, and you move. And he gives check, and you move, and there's just not enough here, really, for white to be able to play this way. I was confident of that, but getting down less than 10 seconds, I, this was anybody's game, you know. And I uh, I really could have lost in the end after I started misplaying it. This whole 95 thing, got it got really, really scary and crazy. But, you know... Took, took some focus under time pressure. I had this idea waiting in the wings, which was kind of my uh, my trick, and, and um, he's he's sort of in trouble anyway. I think with best play, I was winning regardless. It's just that once I got under time pressure, that was, that was not the nerve-wracking affair I was hoping for, considering the position I had in the middle game where I'm just up a whole lot of stuff, so... So, okay, with that, what are the standings? Right now, we have uh, me and Petro both won our games after that draw I had with Petro and after my horrible draw that I gave up earlier in a winning position to this guy right here, Mr. Uh, KK Pin New 9. So, uh, but right now, me and Petro with 5 out of 6 are leading the way, and just like that, the game is starting, and we're playing, playing another 5 out of 6, so certainly... Far from clear or over at this point. I will play d4 and knight to c3, and I will head for my Verisov. My favorito these days. My favorito, my favorite snack. Okay, we play bishop to d3. Play this way. Back up the bishop. We have a sort of strangely symmetrical position right now. Um, now I guess I'm going to take and then put that guy there. And then come up here. Kind of fun, right? Kind of fun. A big fat mess is what this is. Which is a big fat mess. Yeah, he plays g6, which isn't isn't probably his favorite thing to do. I could have played g4, which threatened queen h3, and I thought about it, but I decided to wait a second and take away his ability to double undouble or double my pawns. I'm not even sure it was right. Maybe g4 right away was the best immediately opening up the h5 for the king side, but I didn't take it. I did not take the chance to do that. I feel okay about my chances here, though, with the idea of attacking on the king side. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff, as far as that goes. It's a little irritating, but only a little, because my knight actually guards up too. I didn't, I didn't want to trade queens. Yeah, probably I misplayed it. Probably I should have played g4 right away and been more aggressive before he had a chance to solidify any of this business. Interesting. 
I can play a four and then put the knight there, huh? I guess we'll do that. Hmm. We'll put the knight on e5. Maybe that wasn't the best decision, actually. Ooh. I didn't even think about that. Guess I gotta take this way. I'm gonna go attack g6. See how he wants to deal with that first and foremost. Ooh, wow. Crazy town. Crazy, crazy town. Well, if he's going to put his king there, I'm going to put my king on d2. Why not, right? Mikasa Sukasa. It's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. e4 was interesting, and as well as moving the knight and just sacrificing the exchange. Honestly, I almost moved my knight to e2. He takes e1, I take. I have the knight coming into f4. Would have been quite the scenario, honestly. Um... He's going to want to play c5, and I get it. I get it. But I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put the rook here. Hmm. He says, no, I will not allow this. Well, I'm going to play a3 then. Take with my pawn. Take my chance. To say this position is a little strange might be an understatement. I don't really like my position here, to be honest with you. But it's weird, that's for sure. Kind of a strange move. Well, he goes for it, huh? Okay, maybe I should have been a little more afraid of that. Huh. Maybe I should have been a little more afraid of that idea. Super strange position, though. I don't think he saw this idea coming where I'm, you know, putting this queen on a, putting his queen in a little bit of an awkward position. So. no idea I have no idea but I don't like it for me I have no idea but I do not like it for me if he takes it can I take f7 oh I would have loved that whoa he takes there I think I'm happy with that he's going to play queen e4 check but then what
Hmm. I don't know what's going on here. Could be losing on this move. Darn it. Was he winning if he gave this check here, though? If I come up, then he gives this check? No. Hmm. Should I have not taken that pawn? Give check, and then what? Yeah. No real chance for me to win this game anyway. If I give check and then take the pawn, yeah. Well, wow. I, uh, it's a tough game. That was a good game. And I, and I definitely messed this one up earlier. Somewhere along the lines, this thing got real out of control. Felt super good about the position. Honestly, I, I missed this idea. I missed this idea where he takes and plays bishop b4, so... 95 was a blunder. Up to this point, I was feeling really good about it. I actually like this move a lot. Knight to d1. And then I'm threatening knight f2. So if I trade the knights without any of the shenanigans of him doubling my pawns or any of that stuff, then I can slowly work on opening up the king still. Uh, so this was this was a better idea. Um, the other idea is to, if I could, find a way to get the knight over here, but I don't know. I just missed bishop b4. So a after knight e5 and takes and bishop b4, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe my best chance, especially from a practical perspective, is just to give up the exchange, huh? And if he takes and then I take, and this is this is a this is a weird position, right? My knight's gonna come up here, and I've got the knight and the rook, and probably I have plenty of compensation here. And again, especially from the standpoint that it's a blitz game and I, I want attacking chances. I think this was the, uh, my instinct said to play knight e2 and give up the exchange, and then I didn't. After he played king of seven, I was like, well, if he puts the king on f7, I'll put my king on d2. But when does that ever, you know, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off too? Exactly. Get it. So, um... We are back to a big, huge lead at the top, except that if Petro wins, he'll still be in first, and it looks like Petro's about to win. Petro's going to take care of business here, and then he's going to be in the lead. Um, so Petro will be in clear first with six out of seven, and there'll be a, a large group of us in second. And is that the last round? Oh, man. That's the last round. Wow, if I had known that, I probably would have tried to lose that last game. Oh, man. I didn't even realize that this was it. I didn't even realize it. I was so lost in my own head. Well, I mean, I I can't really begrudge Petro considering I drew him in a completely losing game. But obviously, I gave up a draw in my own winning position. And then, you know, this last one here against uh, Red Chessman... Would have been happier if I had found a way to get that done. 
win that game and tie for first with Petro, but I didn't. And so just like that, our uh, our first ever USCF Blitz tournament comes to an end. And I hope that everybody who joined us is having a great time. Um, we have uh, about 500 of you right now, live viewers, and, and uh, usually there, there's probably more. So um, we're pretty happy about that. And I hope everybody enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, hopefully, hopefully you found some of the games instructive and some of the commentary that was provided. And congratulations to Mr. Petro for uh, taking care of business and, uh, and making it happen. So hats off to you, sir. Everybody else, make sure you play on Friday and Wednesday nights here. I don't think we're going to be doing a live show all the time. This is probably the last time I'm going to do it for a little while. Just wanted to really kind of get the buzz started, the buzz so uh, winners of the first 10 tournaments get Chess.com gear. Just some prize we're donating, you know, just because we love you and because we're so cool here at Chess.com. All right, everybody. Peace out.